Okay, so I want to derive the common mode rejection ratio for a differential amplifier. So basic differential amplifier looks like this. You got a input here that we're going to say is called VN1. And then uh, we've got an input over here to another MOSFET. We'll call this uh, VN2. These are referenced to ground. And the signal is carried actually in the difference of these two. So if you want to think about that, the signal is uh, V in 1 minus V in 2. Now each of these signals uh, consists of two components. A DC component, which is going to be the same, plus a small signal component. So we write that as capital V plus uh, V2. And we're going to assume that each of these MOSFETs is the same, so they have the same K and VT values. Of course, they can never be perfect, but just for purposes of this analysis, we'll imagine that they're perfect. Um, there's a couple of pull-up resistors here, and there's going to be a uh, output voltage here, which again is going to have a DC and a small signal uh, portion. And we want to find the common mode rejection ratio, which we'll abbreviate CMRR which is the small signal gain for uh, the differential mode of input divided by the common mode of input. What do each of these mean? The, diff the gain for the differential mode is basically what is V out divided by V1 minus V2. I will call that V little d. And the common mode is V out over V1 plus V2 over 2, this is VC. But this, it's going to be this under the condition that VC is 0, and it's going to be this under the condition that VD is 0. So basically, if you imagine that the full signal is only differential, uh, then you can calculate this differential gain. So uh, that seems like an odd thing, but because the signal is carried in this differential signal, then really the differential gain we want to be large, and the common mode gain we want to be small, and so the GD over GC we want to be large. So if we can find out what it is, maybe we can figure out what to optimize about this circuit uh, to make it sensitive. So we use a trick. Basically we'll use that um, we can actually treat the... Uh, well, actually, before I get into the trick, let's, let's think about the, the large signal circuit. Now the large signal circuit is going to have some um, voltage here at the common source of the two. Let's call that V sub R. I'm not going to solve for it now, but let's just suppose we've already solved for it. Suppose we know V sub R. Then we can write down the, the small signal circuit. Uh, just reminding you how you do that, you look at that V sub S, that's going to be turned off so these ports are going to be connected to ground and this voltage source is going to this uh, MOSFET is going to be replaced with a current source a linear current source so uh, you're going to have something like this these are the pull-up resistors but now the VS's are connected to ground and then you're going to have your two current sources and these, both of these current sources are going to have, here's your V1, here's your V2. Now we just have the small signal. These are going to have some gain GM times V little gs. And uh, GM in this case is going to be K uh, V, that's going to be the large signal uh, minus that V sub R that I said we we don't know. So this is going to be capital VGS uh, minus VT. All right, so that's the, that's the expression for VGM. Again, we don't know this. I mean, we haven't actually solved it right now, but let's just suppose that we'd already solved for the V sub bar. So I'm not going to worry about that. And let's just say we found that, that G sub N. And it'll obviously depend on, you know, what that bias voltage V is, uh, what it is. We don't care about that for this purpose at this point because we're just trying to find the the characteristic behavior of this circuit.
So if we, uh, let's imagine our input is such that uh, V1, we think of a V1, which is, if you think of it as a, a voltage source here with voltage V1, you can actually think of it uh, in terms of superposition as a sum of two voltage sources, um, V D over two plus VC. And that, you can see how that works out. If you take this VD over two um, and add that VC, you're gonna get V1, okay? So that's right. So we think of this as consisting of two voltage sources, a, a voltage source VD and a voltage source VC. And the V2 can similarly be written uh, just as VC uh, minus VD over two. So if we have that, uh, those relationships, then let's just turn these sources on one at a time. So um, with VD only, well, it's actually pretty easy to work, analyze because this, uh, this is V2 down here. With, with VD only um, and VC turned off, then any positive voltage on V1 is going to be negative on DV2. Uh, they'll be the same, but opposite in sign. So any current going down here is going to come up uh, there. And no current can therefore go through this resistor because all the current coming in here has to go up there. All right, so that implies th that there's no current in that resistor. It makes the circuit a little bit easier to, to analyze. So V out is going to equal whatever that little current is times uh, our pull up, uh, but it's a minus sign because that current, oh actually no, as I drew it, it's a positive sign. I drew that current going up. Uh, now that current is going to equal um, well remember only VD is on so on V1, that's going to give us a VD over 2 over here. So it's going to be uh, GM times VD over 2. And this is at ground because there's no current in that resistor. So there is no, you don't need to worry about taking VGS because VG is equal to VGS because the source is at ground. So we have GM times VD2. So that means that um, V out for this case is equal to GM VD R pull up over two. Okay, now let's let's look at the situation with VC only. All right, with VC only, then these two uh, voltages are going to be, the VGS on the left and the right are going to be the same, and you're going to have current, this current going down in both cases. So that means that if this is I and this is I, then this is going to be 2I here. So that means that V out is equal to minus R pull up times I. Um, but in this case, I is going to equal to GM times, well, this VGS, so that's going to be V1, which is, by the way, just V common, times, uh, uh, sorry, V common minus that voltage, which is going to be 2IR. All right, well, I appears on both sides, so we can rearrange this a little bit and do a little bit of algebra take that 2i r over to the right solve for i and we get gm vc over 1 plus 2 r gm and uh, so that means that v out for this case is minus r pull up GMVC 
over that one plus two RGM. Now we take th these two V outs, this one and this one, and we sum them together and we get V, v out total is gonna equal uh, GM over two VD R pull up minus R pull up GM VC over one plus two R GM. And now if we just uh, multiply, we factor this one plus two R GM out, we'll get, actually we can factor out this GM too. Let's kind of highlight the things that we're gonna factor out here. We're gonna factor out this, we're gonna factor out uh, the R pull up, we're gonna factor out the GM. Uh, and actually let's factor out the one half as well. All right, so it's a lot of factoring, um, but let's try it. So we're gonna get R pull up GM over two plus four RGM. Turns out we're not gonna care about this term because we take the ratios of the gains, uh, that term is gonna cancel, but you'll see how that works in a moment. This, uh, so when we do that factoring, we're gonna have to multiply by one plus two RGM over here and we'll get GM VD R pull up. Oh, actually, we're factoring out the R. Well, we're factoring out the GM and the R pull up. I forgot. Uh, so we're just going to get the VD. Uh, actually, I didn't note that. Let's note that. These ones are factored out as well. So we're going to get the the VD minus. Oh, we have to multiply that by the one plus two R GM. So that's going to be VD plus 2RGM VD. I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to just write it down below. Minus VC. Actually, I think I can fit that up there. Let's just squeeze it in. And there's a factor of 2, minus 2VC. Two All right, so. So that means that if we think about what G D over G C is going to be, uh, G D, if you remember, is the gain. Let's call this whole term here just capital G, so that we don't have to track it all the time. We don't have to copy it down all the time. So uh, G D is the gain with V C set to zero. So it's just going to be that big G factor one plus two R. GM. So we're taking this term and this term. And then if we take the GC term, that's going to be this uh, minus 2. And let's just take the absolute value. So we don't have to worry about the minus signs. Uh, and sorry, it's going to be minus 2 times G. So the G's are going to cancel, and we're going to get a 1 half of 1 plus 2 R G M. All right, so what this tells us is that R has to be quite, uh, if we want CMRR to be the common mode rejection ratio to be large, we want that R to be as large as possible. And that's the main conclusion. Basically, when you make a differential amplifier, uh, if you can increase the effective resistance here, a one easy way to do that is to put a current source there, actually. But if you can increase the effective resistance there, um, you can make a higher rejection of the common amplification, which is, remember, where the noise gets stored. Um, sorry, less amplification of the common and more, more, ampli more amplification of the differential signal.